It's the Lord, everybody. Come on, stand to your feet if you're happy and you know it. Clap your hands. Hallelujah. I don't know about you, but I'm ready to have some chips. Oh, we've been praying to God all day long. Amen. Couldn't wait to get into the house of God. Amen. Hallelujah. I pray that everybody had a good day. Amen. So we're looking for God to move on tonight in a miraculous way. And I know he will. He'll never let us down. Amen. When the blessings goes up, when the praises goes up, amen, the blessings, amen, come down. Let's go before the Lord in prayer. Father, we thank you again for another opportunity that we can come and worship you and praise you in that beautiful holiness. God, we thank you already for what you've done, even all day, how you kept us and how you blessed us. God, you held back incidents and you held back accident. So we come for no other reason but to give you some glory tonight. Give you some praise tonight. In the mighty name of Jesus. Have your way in this house tonight. From the pulpit to the door, God. In the mighty name of Jesus. Let your glory clouds, God. Fill this house, God. Meet every need tonight, God. In the mighty name of Jesus, God. And we thank you right now, God, for what you're going to do. We will forever give you the glory, the honor, and the praise. In Jesus' name, thank God. Amen. Let's have some church.
Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Oh, <laughs> 
say that we have only dreamed about uh, but God is actually preparing us for days that we couldn't even begin to imagine to dream for uh, because he does the exceeding and abundant above all we could ask or think uh, you know we this season necessitates uh, all of us uh, as we talked about last Wednesday night I believe it was protecting the move of God uh, and, and that is important that is really important um, and it, it requires obedience on a level that doesn't have to be coerced, that doesn't have to be uh, manipulated, that doesn't have to be forced or enforced. Uh, it's going to require a willful obedience, a willing obedience to God uh, for what he would have for us to do in our lives um, and as a church. And there are things happening, saints, that are only... In small beginnings right now but the effect and impact that the church that this church that the truth that we carry is going to have upon this region uh, it, it is untold uh, there are hearts and minds opening up uh, to the truth because uh, ministry is beginning to realize uh, that the truth is where everything is settled where everything is founded upon the foundation of the church has to be the truth. And uh, it is good to leave the church uplifted and encouraged. It's good to, if, if you could have left out of here Sunday night and not want to turn back flips, you need to come down and get your spirit right. Because there was such a great power of God in this place. Uh, and that's good. The, the emotional high of the church is a powerful thing. Because when God begins to break up the fallow ground, he does it in the emotions. He prepares the heart to receive the word of God. Uh, but, but everything in this church will hinge upon what God has given us in truth. And that's the reason why we can never, ever let it go. We can never get in our spirits, never allow it to get in your spirit. Uh, that I, uh, uh, I could go somewhere else and be happy because, you know, uh, it's not all about what you know. No, the truth is really what sets you free. It's what makes you free. And as I consider what God's doing among us, uh, we were in here with several of the brothers yesterday uh, having Bible study. Uh, one of the brothers could not make it, uh, who is newly coming among us. Uh, but I got a message from Brother Whitesides today saying, could you please send me this and this and this, because this brother is really hungry. Uh, that's, that's a wonderful sign that people are getting hungry for the truth because they realize that they've been they've been preached to uh, they've been told a whole lot of things but they have not been taught uh, in fact I, I, I showed them something very 
uh, interesting, we were going through, we're, we're making um, a document that will declare how we define certain doctrinal positions. And, 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 and Brother Whiteside had taken a template of, of what someone else had done. And of course it was declaring the Trinitarian doctrine. Uh, and, and there were some scriptures for the Father declaring who the Father was. Some scriptures for the Son, of course they were misinterpreting uh, who the Son was. But then when it came to the Holy Ghost being a person, there were zero scriptures. It was just, this is who the Holy Ghost is, and you'll just have to accept it. There was absolutely no scripture to declare. But everything that we must know must be based upon what is in the scripture. Because the word of God uh, is the foundation of our lives. And that even works in obedience in our life. I told the brothers the other day, yesterday, we were talking about it, and, and, and the discussion came up where Jesus said in Matthew 28 uh, that they were to make disciples, going to every nation, making disciples, and baptizing them in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Ghost. Now, a lot of Trinitarian people say in the name of the Father, and in, in the name of the Son, and the name of the Holy Ghost, but that's not what it says. It says, in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Ghost. Uh, it doesn't say names, it says name. And the question was, then why, after the day of Pentecost, did they baptize in Jesus' name? And I took them to the scripture where Jesus said, I did not come in my own name, but I came in my Father's name. And I told the brethren, I said, we probably really know very little about the Son of God. In all actuality, we probably know very little about him. Because he did not come to declare himself. He came to declare his Father. Everything that was about him was of his father. And that's the reason why when the apostles came to them and say, when will you show us the father? And he said, how long is it that you have been with me that you have not seen the father? How, how, how could you walk with me and not see the father? Because he was declaring to them, everything that I am is who the father is. Which is why they said, when they came to him and said, a good master, he said, why have you called me good? He said, but there is none good but my Father which is in heaven. Not that Jesus was not good, but what he's saying is my goodness is not inherent within myself. But even my goodness is the Father's goodness. In fact, he just said, I didn't even come to speak of myself. I came to speak of him that sent me. He said, my judgment is not my own. He said, I hear as the Father judgeth. He said, that's how I judge. He said, nothing that I am or do or say is me. So when we think about the Son of God, we probably know very little about Him. Because He didn't come to declare Himself. He came to declare His Father. And, and I told the brother, and I asked the brother the other day, yesterday, I said, I said, do you think Jesus died for us because He loved us? And of course, the immediate reaction would be, well, of course. And I said, no, He didn't die for us because He loved us. And of course, that causes the whole room to get quiet as it did right now <laughs> the father John 3 16 says what for God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son that whosoever believeth in him in his son should not perish but have everlasting life God loved us that's what put Jesus on the cross but what kept Jesus on the cross was not his affection for us what kept Jesus on the cross was his affection for his father. It was his love for his father that kept him on the cross. And so as, I, as, as the Lord began to deal with me on that subject, God really began to speak to my heart and ask me, why do you obey me? Where does your obedience come from? And of course, my initial thinking is because I fear you, God. Because I know you're God. And I want to do your will. I, 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 want to, I, want, I want you to be pleased with me. But if our obedience to God is based upon how we, how we fear him alone, then it will not take much to cause us to be disobedient. Amen. When you no longer have fear of God, Come on now, fear God. then you'll disobey him readily and easily. Because you're not afraid of him. That's right. When you lose that convicting fear that causes you to realize how great he is and how small you are. When you begin to be too big, All right. you will lose your, uh, your desire yes, you will. 
to be obedient to the Father. Yes, you will. So there has to be another driving force mm -hmm. that causes our obedience. Come on now. There has to be something in us that causes us to desire to be obedient to the Father. Right. Uh, go with me to John 5 and, and, and verse 30. Because I want my I want my, my obedience to be driven Amen. by the right thing. If you remember, God sent the prophet to Saul and told him, go down to the Amalekites and destroy everything. Every living thing is going to die. Samuel comes and he says, paraphrasing Saul, I thought I, thought I told you God said kill everything. Mm -hmm. So I did. He said, well, what is this lowing of the sheep I hear in my ears? And he looks over at the king uh, of, of the Amalekites and says, and who's that? Do you know what God told Saul? He said, I could use you while you were yet small in your own eyes. Right. So when Saul began to be exalted and he lost his fear of God, yes. he easily, without even, without even hindrance, without even, without even a hiccup, he disobeyed him. But Jesus said here, he said, I can of mine own self do nothing. Nothing that I do can I do of my own self. Yeah. He said, as I hear, I judge. He said, I don't even judge my own judgment. He said, I hear the Father judge and I judge. He said, because I seek not mine own will, but the will of the Father which has sent me. Yeah. He said, I'm not here on my own. My, I'm not here to do my own thing. Right. I'm here on assignment from the Father. And that's what I'm going to do. He said, if I bear witness of myself, my witness is not true. In other words, he says, if I came here and declared to you myself, he said, I'm absolutely missing the assignment because I didn't come here for that. That's the reason why I can't wait to get to the kingdom. It makes me more excited to get to the kingdom because I'm going to get to know him. Because what I see of the Jesus in the Bible tells me about the Father. But I can't wait to get there so I can get to know him. No wonder Paul said, oh, that I might know him. Yeah, I, know. Woo, I want to know you, Lord. Hallelujah. He said, there is another that beareth witness of me, and I know that witness which he witnesseth of me is true. Uh, he said, yet, he said, yet, uh, he sent unto John, and he bear witness unto the truth. But I receive not testimony from man, but the things I say that ye might be saved. And so he says here, he said, listen, I'm not here to speak of myself. I'm not here to declare myself. I came to declare to you the Father. All right? Somebody say amen. Amen. Now I want you to go uh, with me here. Let me show, make sure I've got to. Go with me to John 4. And here Jesus has dealt with the woman at the well, the woman in Samaria. He deals with her. We know what happened. I'm not going to go into that tonight because it's, 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 it's I've, 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 I've preached it and taught it so many times. But before he went, to the well, he sent the disciples to go get food. Yeah. They come back with the food uh, uh, in, 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 in John 4.31. It says, in the meanwhile, his disciples prayed him, saying, Master, eat. They came back with food. But he said unto them, I have meat to eat that ye know not of. Mm -hmm. Therefore said the disciples to one another, hath any man brought him aught to eat? And Jesus saith unto them, my meat is to do the will of him that sent me and to finish his work. His work. In other words, this is not my work I came to do. I've come to finish the work of the Father. Because there's something that God hid in Christ from before the foundation of the world. There was a work, there was a secret, there was a mystery hid in him. Because man had fallen. And, and the connection between God and man had been severed. Yeah. And yes, God permitted man uh, through, the, through the lineage of the Jews and some that he chose uh, to show himself to and to speak to. But man as a whole could not get to him. No. In fact, at one point, all you could do is go to the priest and the priest had to go to you for him or go to him for you. But the fact of the matter is Jesus came to deal with all of that. If you were a Gentile, you were without God. You are aliens from the commonwealth of Israel. You are absolutely cut off from the promises of God. But when Jesus came, there was a work that God started from the foundation of the world. When he looked at his son and said, you'll pay for that. 
Because the ministry that the the, the 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 work that God had for Jesus to do was the ministry of reconciliation, to reconcile all men unto Him, to reconcile all men unto the Father. Jesus didn't come here to connect us to Him. He came here to connect us back to the Father. He was the bridge that brought all men back to the Father. And that's the reason why when Jesus came, He said, I didn't come to do this of my own self. But there was something motivating Jesus that caused Him to be obedient. There was something that motivated Him. Uh, let, let, me, let me look at something real quick here. There's a scripture that came to my mind. Hebrews 12 and, and verse 2 or verse 1. Let's just start verse 1. Hebrews 12 verse 1. The Bible said, Wherefore seeing also we are compassed about with so great a cloud of witness, let us yes. let us lay aside every weight and the sin that just so easily was just so easily beset us and let us run with patience the race that is set before us. He said, here's our example. He said, looking unto Jesus. He's the author. Everything we do, He came to show us. Everything that we are required of God, He came to reveal to us. He is the author and finisher of the faith. Who for the joy that was set before Him, endured the cross despising the shame, and is now set down at the right hand of the, majesty, or of the throne of God. Listen. Listen. Jesus went to the cross for the joy that was set before him. Yeah. And somebody said, what was that joy? Somebody said, I'm the joy. I was the joy. I was, had nothing to do with you. Look at your neighbor and tell them, I had nothing to do with you. I had nothing to do with you. There was something that Jesus desired from the moment that he could consciously think while he was in his human body. There was something that he wanted. wanted. There was something that he had given up when he came on, that he desired to get back. Come on now, say it. It was the joy that was before Come on him. Now. Because before the world was, All right, say it. somewhere in eternity, All right. God said, Thou art my son. Yeah. This day have I been Hallelujah. And there was a relationship that began to be developed between the Father and the Son. He looked at him and said, you're my father. Yeah. And the father looked at him and said, you're my son. Yeah. And he loved him as his son. Yes, and Jesus loved the father as his father. And they had fellowship together. God didn't do anything without it. Yeah. My Lord. The Bible said that he was the beginning of the creation of God. Yeah. The firstborn of every creature. Yeah. There was something that he had when, when, when God looked at him and said, come. Let us make men in our image. For the Bible said that by him was all things created. And without him was nothing made. There was not anything made that was made. In other words, the Father did not even create without him. Woo. When he went down to confound the language at the Tower of Babel, the Father said, Son, come let us go down. Let us go down. There was a relationship and intimacy yes. that had taken place before the world ever was. Come on. God in heaven. Preach it. And when Jesus came here, uh, go with me real quick. I believe it's in Philippians. Hallelujah. Amen. Glory to God. Two. And let's start at just verse one. He said, if there be any consolation in Christ, if there be any comfort of love, if any comfort of love, if any fellowship of the Spirit, if any bowels of mercies, fulfill ye my joy, that ye be like-minded, having the same love, being of one accord and of one mind. He said, that's what I want from you. Yeah. He said, let nothing be done through strive or vain glory, but in lowliness of mind, let each esteem other better than themselves. Look not every man on his own things, but every man... Also on the things of others. Let this mind be in you. Which was which also was in Christ Jesus. Who being in the form of God. See nothing was created like him. He was in the form of God. He was in the likeness of the Father. Everything else was spoken into existence. But Jesus was. He came out of the Father. 
He was born out of the Father. Yes, he was. I hope you're hearing what I'm saying. Yes, he was. Nothing else there. No heavenly host. No stars in the heaven. No planets. No galaxies. Just the Father and Son all by themselves. Yes. Having fellowship one another. Yes. He said daily was I his delight. Woo! Good Lord in heaven. There was a love that the Father had yes, for him. And that he had for the Father. But the Bible said, him being in the form of God, thought it not robbery to be equal with God. The actual literal interpretation says, though he were in the form of God, he thought equality with God not something to be grasped at. Right. Yeah. He understood who he was. But he made himself of no reputation. He emptied himself of everything he was in the heavens. And he took upon him the form of a servant and was made in the likeness of men. Yeah. He gave up everything. In fact, the very last thing that he gave up before he gave up the ghost, he gave up that connection with the Father that he had as the Son of Man. Because he said, Eli, Eli, I'm almost so bad me. Why? My God, my God, why? Why have you forsaken me? What kept him going when he was in the garden? What kept him going when he was at the whipping post? What kept him going when they put the crown of thorns on his head? What kept him going when they mocked him and they laughed at him and they made fun of him? What kept, what kept him going when they hit him with their fists? What kept him going yeah. when they put a, a gauze of vinegar in his mouth when he cried out and said, I thirst? There was something that he desired. Yes, sir. There was a connection that had been lost. Right. That even though he could feel his father, mm. even though the father was in him by the spirit, mm. it wasn't the same no, it wasn't. Yeah. as what he had in the heavens. Oh, my, my. It was not the same. No. It, it, he, he, he appreciated it, but it couldn't satisfy him. Mm, yeah. Because the only thing that would satisfy the longing of his soul yes. is if he could return back to the one whom he loved. Yeah. God, I hope you hear what I'm saying, saints. It had nothing to do with the splendor of heaven. Yeah. It had nothing to do with his position. It had nothing to do with him being crowned king of kings and lord of lords. It had nothing to do with him being a given a kingdom. It had everything to do with the fact that he had lost that intimate connection with the father whom he loved so desperately. And you say, how do you know that? Go with me to John 17. Yes, yes sir. Because when he was praying, he asked the father something. Yes, he he made a request on his own behalf. Yes, he did. Good God. Hallelujah. 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 In verse 4 of John 17. He said, I have glorified thee on the earth. I have finished the work which thou gavest me to do. He said, and now, O Father, glorify thou me with thine own self, with the glory which I had with thee. Before the world was. He said the only thing I'm asking you to do. Is let me get back to your glory. Let me get back to that place. That I had with you. I'm not asking for anything else. I'm not asking for anything extra. I just want to get back where I was before the world. Hallelujah. Oh, hallelujah. You said what motivated the obedience of the son of God. It was his love for the father. That's what motivated his obedience. The father didn't have to coerce him. He didn't have to beat him into obedience. He didn't have to force him into obedience. He just loved his father so much that he wanted the restoration of the relationship. He wanted the restoration of the position with the father he had before the world was. And he said, and I got to die to get there. And, oh, God. I'll do whatever you want. I just want to come back to you. Yeah. Good God in heaven. I wish this could get in people's spirit. To where you don't have to offer them bribes to come to the house of God. Come on. To where you don't have to coerce them into obeying the Lord. But they would say, if this gets me back to you, nevertheless, not my will. Our, our, our obedience must be based upon love. Yes. 
based upon the love that we have for him. Amen. And sometimes fear helps when our love is waning. But fear cannot be the foundation of our obedience. Because Jesus said, if you love me, you will keep my commandments. Oh, I want to see. Oh, look upon his face. Hallelujah. There to sing forever of his saving grace. Since he came and I didn't get to see him. I didn't get to behold him with eyes. I didn't get to hold, brother, the Lamb of God. I, I didn't get to hold him. No. I didn't get to touch him. I didn't, I didn't get to handle him. But there is coming a day yes. that he is going to appear. And I do not want to be ashamed before him at his coming. No. But I want to hear him say, well done, my good and faithful servant. Hallelujah, because I want to see him, saints. It's not just about feeling him. Thank God I can feel him. But oh, I want to see him. I want to see him. The motivating factor is the glory that we will have with him when he comes. To know him. To see him. To be able to talk to him Amen. face to face. For we now see in part. Yes, yes. Therefore we prophesy in part. Yes. We see through a glass darkly yes, but, yes. Then, but then yes. face to face. Hallelujah. I only get to see a little bit of him. But there's coming a day saints of God. When I will behold the king in his glory. Hallelujah. That should be your motivating factor. Not because you want houses. Not because you want cars. Not because you want blessings. Not because you want thrones. Not because you want crowns. Oh, that's good. And you'll get that. But what motivates you should be, oh, I want to see him. And I don't want to wait till the final resurrection to see him. But as soon as he comes, God, let me see him. Yes. Hallelujah. 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 Thank you, Jesus. Then we'll worship him because we love him. Yes, Lord. Hallelujah. We'll praise Him because we love Him. We'll dance before Him because we love Him. Hallelujah. We'll serve Him because we love Him. We'll show up at church because we love Him. Hallelujah. How can you say you love God, but you don't love His bride? And if the church is the bride in the earth, He's not going to accept you having disdain for His wife and yet say you love Him. The devil is a liar. I'm not coming to church because I don't want to be rebuked by the preacher. I'm coming to church because I love him. I want to see him. I want to know him. My God, I may not be able to but know him part now, but God, let me know everything I can. Yes, Lord. When Jesus was hanging on that cross and they were saying, Physician, heal thyself. If you really be the Son of God, take yourself down. My God, there wasn't even a temptation in him. He just hung right there between heaven and earth because he knew this is how I'm going to get back to him. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Glory to God. Woo. I can't even imagine what he must have felt. Hallelujah. When he resurrected on that morning. Oh, praise God. And Mary and Martha, or Mary ran into him, and he said, Mary, and she turned back, he said, don't touch me, for I have not ascended to the Father. But it wasn't long after she left him that Jesus went up into the heavens. He went back to the Father. He sprinkled the blood on the mercy seat, which is in heaven, because the next time he appears, they touch his hands. He must have went to the Father. I can't even imagine what he felt like when he was able to go back to see him. Oh, they ought to be loved. Yes, yeah, yeah. 
I was thinking about that today. I walked in the house and Braxton was sitting on his rocker. As soon as I walked in the house, I mean, his, his whole world lit up because his grandfather walked into the house. And he loves his grand. He loves his grandpa. He loves him. I mean, I'm not ashamed. He loves me. And as soon as I, he was crying, I could hear him crying in the door. As soon as I opened the door, That's as close as we can get to trying to figure out what it's going to be like. No wonder he's going to have to give us a glorified body before we get to him. Because I don't think we can contain it this way. I think we'd spontaneously combust. And that's the reason why Paul said, I have finished my course. I have, I have, I've run my race, I've finished my course, I've fought a good fight, I've kept the faith. He said, henceforth, there is laid up for me a crown of righteousness, which the Lord, the righteous judge, shall give me in that day, but not unto me only, but all those that love, 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 love. Yes, Why aren't you out there for the king? Because I love him. Why aren't you out there popping pills? Because I love him. Why aren't you out there drinking? Because I love him. Why aren't you out there cussing? Because I love him. humanity was fearing he could conquer that because he had a promise Amen. that if he finished this yeah. he was going to get to go back hallelujah and he wouldn't go back having to say father I didn't finish I failed at the assignment but he went back and can you imagine the glory and the splendor yeah, man. that must have rocked him. Oh, Lord. Woo, when the lion of the tribe of yeah, yeah. <laughs> when the conqueror walked in. Yeah. Hallelujah. Having been victorious over death, hell, and the grave. God in heaven. Yeah. Oh, yeah. God. Oh. Having overcome sin in every, every facet of this world. Yeah. What glory that must have been. Yeah. There's coming the day, saints. Somebody said, I wonder what that must have looked like. Go with me to Daniel 7. Yeah. Ooh, yeah. Glory to God. Amen. Hallelujah. And verse 9. Oh, God. Thank you. And I beheld till the thrones were cast down. Victory had been won. Hallelujah. Every principality and power yes. and every dominion had been defeated at the death and resurrection of the Son of God. And the Ancient of Days did sit, whose garment was white as snow, and the hair of his head was like pure wool. Yes. His throne was like the fiery flame in his wheels is burning fire. Oh, and fire sh a fiery stream issued and came forth from before him. Thousands, thousands ministered unto him. And ten thousands times ten thousand yes. stood before him. Oh, God. Oh, glory to God. He said the judgment was set. Yes. And the books were opened. Then he goes down into 13 and he sees another vision. We see the throne of God. Yeah. But he sees another one. Yeah. He said, and I saw in the night visions. Hallelujah. And behold, one like the Son of Man. Glory to yes. God. Amen. Came with the clouds of heaven. Yes. And came to the Ancient of Days. Hallelujah. And they brought him near before him. Yes. And there was given him dominion. Yes. And glory, glory and a kingdom yes. that all people, nations, and languages should serve him, and his dominion is an everlasting dominion which shall not be destroyed. Amen. Saints of God, there's the reason why he gets all this yes. 
is because he finished. Amen. When he was up at Calvary and he said, it is finished. He wasn't saying the price that I is paid. He was saying, Father, the work which you sent me to do, which was not just the cross, but every person he healed, every blind eye healed, every heart he touched, every sinner who he converted, every beggar that he brought up, he was showing the Father. Hallelujah. Every rebuke and chastisement against the religious order of his day, he was showing the Father. Amen. And all those outcasts, those Gentile dogs, who were outside the commonwealth of Israel, every one of them he reached out to. He was doing the work that his Father sent him to do. Hallelujah. He did it. He finished it, Brother yeah, Calvin. Yeah. He sang on the cross what Paul said in 2 Timothy. Yeah. This thing is over. Yeah. I have accomplished yeah. and finished yeah. the work that you sent me to do. Who could, Lord? Lord. Yeah. I know that the heavens turned black and an earthquake happened and the veil of the temple was rent. But three days later, hallelujah, yeah. because it was not possible that he could be home of death. For he was sinless and had overcome the world. The Son of God resurrected with all power in his hand. Woo, glory to God. And he went back to the heavens. And I know there was rejoicing and splendor. He sprinkled the mercy seat on the, 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 the blood on the mercy seat. And victory had been wrought. The work of Satan had been forever crushed. Hallelujah. Saints of God, what motivates your obedience? Rebuke from this pulpit? You're not obeying for the right reason. No, you're not. Amen. Because you're afraid that other people will look at you and say, oh, you ain't a Christian? That shows that your heart's not there. Good. But when you love him, yeah. and somebody said, well, the only two commandments God that Jesus gave was to Love God with all you are and love your neighbor as yourself. But he said, Upon these two, hang all the law on the prophets. In other words, what he's saying is, I'm simplifying things for you. Because if you adhere to these two, you won't break any of the rest. Amen. Thank God for the Old Testament, Brother Brian. Thank God. These fools out here talking about we're not under we're not under the law we're under grace and the Old Testament is is is, is irrelevant we're, we're you know we're we're just going to go by Jesus that's foolishness that's ridiculous that's ridiculous you want to know why because the only way they knew who Jesus was because they could go back to the Old Testament the only way and they could see him yes sir and Jesus told them didn't he he said search the scriptures. I bet you it hit them right there. Mm -hmm. I bet you right there they thought, if we go back to the Old Testament, we're going to be able to find him. They went and they preached him from the Old Testament. Yes, they did. When Peter was preaching on the day of Pentecost, he went back to the Old Testament. Mm -hmm. Every time you hear one of these great men of God in the, Old Te in, 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 the Old, in the New Testament preaching Jesus, they did it from the Old Testament. Yes, sir. My God, Stephen standing before that Sanhedrin council yes. went all the way back to Moses. Yes, oh, good God. Hallelujah. He showed him Jesus. Yes. When Jesus read, read, met those two disciples on the road to Emmaus, yes. the Bible said he went back to Moses yes. all the way through the prophets yes. showing that he was the Son of God. Yes. Yes. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. There has to be something. That motivates the child of God. That pride can't touch. Amen. That self-centeredness cannot get to. It, brother. I see way too many of God's people serving God self-centeredly. Yes, they serve him for his benefits. On, they serve him because they want to be a good person. Mm -hmm. They serve him because, because the, the, it makes them look good. But somebody's got to serve him because they love him. Somebody's got to serve him because they love him. 
They got to serve him because he's got their heart. They got to serve him because he's 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 the one whom their soul loves. Oh, good Lord in heaven. That woman lay on her bed and her husband wasn't there. The one whom her soul loved was not in that bed. She said, I can't take this. I got to go see that. She said, I've got to look for the one whom my soul loves. Let me tell you something. If you love him, and I'm not talking about you have a fickle human emotion for him. I'm talking about your soul loves him. You'll seek for him. You'll look for him. Hallelujah. Glory to God. You will look for him. And you will not make any of this about you. You won't make it about your name. You won't make it about your desires. Right. You won't make it about your thoughts and your opinions. But you'll look in his word and say, if that's what will please you. Yeah. Yeah. Not because I'm uh, not because I'm, I'm scared you're going to strike me down. No. But Lord, I love you so much. Sure. This may go against everything I desire. And everything my flesh wants. It may grade against everything that this world tells me is natural and normal. But if this is what will please you, Lord, if this is what it will please you, Lord, then Lord, nevertheless, not my will, but thy will be done. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Paul tells us that in the last days perilous times will come. Yes. And men will be lovers of themselves yes. rather than lovers of God. Yes, sir. Oh, I want a church full of the lovers of God. Yes. Full of people that love Him. They're not, they're not afraid that He's going to beat them down if they fall. They're just afraid to disappoint. Yes. Hallelujah. I'm someone disappoint you. Yes. I know you're going to have to chasten me here and there. And I know, Lord God, that you're going to have to whip me into shape at times. But, Lord, I'm not obeying you because I'm afraid of your belt. I'm obeying you because I don't want to disappoint you. I love you. Yeah. When you love him, you'll be careful what you do with his name. All these Christians out there using the name of Jesus, they got Jesus on their shirts, they got Jesus on their hats, but they do not have him in their heart. Because no. if you had him in, his, in your heart, you wouldn't do the stuff you do. Yeah. Come on, somebody. Amen. It'd be better for you to go full scale a child of hell. Than to be a hypocrite. Because at least when you're a child of hell, you know you need him. But when you're a hypocrite, you think everything's settled and now you don't need him. But I'm telling you, I want to wake up tomorrow, Brother Marvell, and know I need him. I, I want to go to bed tonight, Brother Brian, and I know I need him. Hallelujah. I want to sleep and wake up in the middle of the night and say, Lord, I just know I need you. Not only do I need you, but Lord, I want you. I desire you, God. Oh, that I might know you, Lord. Oh, God. And if I got to lift my hands, I know it's against my nature, and I know it's against my personality, but Lord, if I got to raise my hands and open up my mouth and give you the praise in order to get your presence, because I love you and I want you, I will not be satisfied to sit here and do nothing when I don't know where you are. But Lord, if lifting my hands will get you here, I'll do whatever I got to do. If dancing before you will get you here, I'll do whatever I got to do. If clapping my hands will get you here, I'll do whatever I got to do. The reason why people don't want to do that is because it's about them. It's really an issue of pride. Somebody said, that's not my personality. No, what you're saying is that's too much for my pride. Because when he has said, I inhabit your praise, if you loved him, you'd praise him. Because you want I, I All we can do at this point is fill his presence. But I love him so much that I'll take that. Oh, hallelujah. I'm like the Seraphonician woman. Lord, if all I get is crumbs, I'll get crumbs. I mean, whatever you can offer me. When we get to a church that is desperate for him. Yeah. Not because they need a bigger bank account. Right. Right. Not even because they need a healing. Right. Not even because they need deliverance. But because they love him. Hallelujah. They desire him. Yeah. They want to pursue him. Yeah. 
when we get to a church that will praise him without any type of strings attached. Praise him without any coercion. Praise him without any cheerleading. But you'll come in and say, oh God, if I have to lift my hands to feel you today, if i got to praise you with all my heart, because he said, you will find me when you seek for me with your whole heart. Lord, if finding you means I have to give you everything i got on Wednesday night and Sunday night and Sunday morning and Monday night and Monday morning and Tuesday and Wednesday, Lord, if, if it takes that, God, I'll do whatever i got to do. Because if it, if it kills my pride, it doesn't matter. Because I'm in pursuit of the King of Kings. Because I love Him. And I will not sit in this bed alone. I will not stay in this house alone. But if I have to go out in the street, I will keep doing what i got to do. Until I find Him who my soul loves. Bed is a representation of comfort. The house is a reputation is a representation of security. But she said, if I have to leave my comfort and leave my security blanket and go out in the street, I'm going to do whatever it takes until I find him whom my soul loves. Then when I get him. Hallelujah. You know what we felt in here tonight? We felt his presence walk in here. Yeah. And then we saw some people that wouldn't let him go. Right. I'm a hold on, Lord, with all I got because I can't let you go. Yeah. And it's not about your benefits. It's not about your blessings. I just want to see your face. Because if I see your face, I get to see the glory of God. Because the glory of God is here in the face of Jesus Christ. God, let us love you. From my whole heart, God. I won't wake up in the morning, Lord. I, I, I don't. I don't want to wake up in the morning unless he puts a song in my heart. I don't want to wake up in the morning unless I thank him for another day. Hallelujah. I know you like your news channel, but my God, wake up in the morning. Put your feet on the floor and say, Lord, thank you. And by the way, Jesus, today I meet you. I want you and I love you. And I don't want to make it through this day without you. So, Lord, wherever I go, Lord, will you go with me? Wherever you need me to go, Lord, will you send me? Because I do not want to take another breath unless I know that you're there with me. That has to be the driving force. Hallelujah. You stop watching people stay home on Wednesday nights. You, you start watching people come to the church on Sunday night and on Sunday morning and on Wednesday nights. You stop watching the services be different on Sunday and worship and Sunday night and, and Wednesday night. You'll see people that will worship Him because we know from the rising of the sun to the going down of the same, the name of the Lord is to be praised. Oh God, new destiny, let's fall head over heels in love with the Lord. Let's love Him with all of our heart. Let's love Him with everything we are. Let's love Him. Because there's going to come times that the tempter's going to come. Hallelujah. And he's going to say, you don't need all that church. But you're going to be like Jesus. If this is what it takes to get to him. Hallelujah. I'm going to church. Are you hearing what I'm saying, saints? People will stop making excuses and justifying their excuses for staying at home. They'll say, it doesn't matter. If I have to go there because we're two or three are gathered in his name. So, Lord, if I got to go to church to find you, to see you, to feel you, I'm not staying home another day. Oh, I want to know you. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Thank you. All that stuff people are seeking for happiness and peace and joy. It's in the Holy Ghost. It's in the Holy Ghost. But they're looking in people. They're looking in possessions. Come on, somebody. I, I hate to tell people. People think that, that their parents make them happy or that their husbands make them happy that their wives. Make. Let me tell you something. He said, Thou shalt have no other God before me. No other God. Hallelujah. If you don't look to him for your peace and your happiness and joy, he will mess up your marriage. He will get into your relationship and he'll start meddling with things. Until you realize she don't bring me joy. He don't bring me joy. I got to go find him who my soul loves. Hallelujah. And if you'll find him, you'll fix your marriage. If you'll find him, he'll fix your relationships. And you'll stop disappointing people. And you'll stop setting people up to disappoint you. 
Because what you need to look for in him, you're trying to force out of them. They don't have the capacity to love you like he does. They don't have the capacity to bring Come on now. They don't have the capacity to bring. How could you set somebody up like that? To, find, to, to push them to make you happy. Say it, brother. How could you set somebody up like that? Who's wrapped up in human flesh just like you. To perpetually make you happy. How could you do that to somebody? But all you have to do is find him. Good God. And he will keep you in perfect peace. Whose mind is stay on the Lord. Glory to God. I hate to tell people, but there's some relationship breaking going to happen. You're right, brother. Between children and parents and husbands and wives. Because right. they're pursuing the wrong peace. Right. Hallelujah. Oh, I love that old song. He give you peace. You know? yeah. Yeah. Sweet love and joy. Heaven. And heaven too. Mm -hmm. Only Jesus, Only Jesus. Yeah. can satisfy my soul. Yeah. Let me tell you, them old saints knew what they were talking about. Yeah. When they were writing some of these songs, they just had it down in them. They loved him like they were supposed to. But it is time for us to look in the word and say, Lord, what will please you? Yes, Not what will please me. Yes, sir. Not what will make me happy. Yes, sir. Not what will make me want to do what is right. All right. But Lord, what will please you? Yes, Lord. Amen. And we'll fix some stuff in our homes. Yes. We'll fix some stuff in our churches. We will. Because we love him. You won't have people. Oh, I'm going to serve God today. And they'll get into church for two weeks strong. And then week three they go MIA. You won't have that stuff. It's going to be like David. I was glad. David was after his heart going. He was after. He was, he was in pursuit of something. And he didn't say, I'll go to the house of God when my old bones feel like it. He said, I was glad when they said, let us go to the house of God. Oh, praise his Glory to God. Because I ain't got nothing else. What would I stay home from church for? There's nothing else. Well, watch TV. You know what that television's doing? It's distracting you yeah. from the one whom you sold out. Yeah. We got people. I start talking about television. They they have a spontaneous combustion right there. They flip out. They tell you my TV. I bet you that demon does. I guarantee you they're watching the TV ten times more than they're talking to God. In fact, if they probably be honest, they don't talk to God because of TV. I'm looking at Fortnite right now, and I'm going, we're about to stop all this mess, even in my own home. Because I'm telling you, I'm not having my child distracted from serving God because it is more beneficial or it is more convenient for me to raise him in front of an electronic. Amen. Because then at least he's not in my head. The devil is in my head. That don't please God. That's pleasing Jared May and Xander Lee. That ain't per that ain't pleasing God. And the Lord told me to take His word and write it upon His forehead, write it upon His heart. Let's get real, saints. He borrowed them to us. They don't belong to us. We set them up for failure because we don't want them being the weirdos. We want them to be cool. Let me tell you something. Every time I tried to fit in in, in, in my in, in, in my teenage years, I always found myself in trouble. Because really what fitting in means I had to follow the course of the world. Amen. I don't want my son thinking hey, that's how you're cool. Is when you talk like him and look like him and walk like him. When you do what they do and go where they go and say what they say and do and play what they play. My God. I'll fail God. I will fail God. 
but I can't fail. Not that it's not possible, but I can't stand to. Because I love him. And this child that he borrowed to me, somebody said, they're my children, they ain't your children. They're God's. But he borrowed them to you to raise them to love him. And if our children don't love God like they should, not hey, I, I, I'm, I'm up here getting beat up just as everybody else is. If we did, then we're, something's wrong. Something is wrong in the house. I guarantee you Muslim children get on their face toward Mecca at least three times a day with their parents and pray toward that dead God. Yet we serve the living God, and I wonder how many times prayer even happens in our home for children. No wonder, no wonder their faith is so overtaking everything. Because they actually believe what they believe. But if we believe that we serve the living God, and we love him, how should we not even be more devoted to the faith that we believe to be true. Yeah. But if you looked into the homes and into the lives of many Christians, you wouldn't see devotion. You would see complacency, ab absence of discipline, apathy, and really, the whole thing would smell like the flesh. But God, I want him to be able to come into my house and say, ah, this, this one belongs to me. Could, could, we, could we challenge ourselves? Even if you're a single person, even if, even if you're not, you don't have children, or maybe you're a couple and you don't have children, could we challenge ourselves to make our houses somewhere where the Lord could come into it? God, let that be my house. I ain't there yet. But God, let it be my house. Hallelujah. The Christian religion of this modern generation is a laughing stock. It's putrid filth is what it is. Because we're claiming a faith we would not die for. And somebody said, I'd die for the Lord. Which cracks me up because the same people I hear say, I'd die for the Lord won't even live for him. But God, let that be in my heart. Let that be in my children's heart. That if one day they were to have to give their life for the Lord, they wouldn't have such love of self. I, 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 look, at, I look at my children. My, some of them are grown, they others not. Well, some of them are physically grown. There's a difference between growing up and maturing. But... I sit there and I say, Lord, you put me as a responsible party to be the first authority in their life. <clears throat> and if they, if, they, if they treat me with disrespect, then I have trained them to disrespect you. Because it was my job. See, that's where even, that, that's where even saints, as parents, we have to change our mentality. That's mama's little baby. That's daddy's little boy. I don't want to displease. I don't want them to be displeased. I don't. It's not about you. You are supposed to, and I'm supposed to be training our children to be submitted to God. And if we will not enforce submission at any cost to us, what hell are they going to have to go through to find it in Christ? Right. Or will they ever? That's something we have to think about. As spouses that have that have that have other that, that, that have our loved ones that are outside the church. Am I exemplifying Christ? Do they hear me pray for? Do they hear me call on God? Do they see me reading my Bible? In other words, do they are they actually convinced that I'm a Christian? Are my children convinced I'm a Christian? 
are my co-workers, my employers, my teachers. Are they convinced I'm a Christian? Jesus didn't come to declare himself. He didn't come to show himself. He didn't come to do his own will. He didn't even come in his own name. Everything he was, was to exemplify who the Father is. And Paul said, we are left to fill up what was left behind. We are to be the body of Christ on the earth. Our head's sitting in heaven, but his body is still in the earth. When people look at this church, do they see Christ? And I'm not talking about the fickle, almost homosexual Christ that the church world is teaching. I'm talking about, are they seeing the Christ of the scriptures? Do they see him? When I go to work, is my conversation seasoned with salt? Well, why, why is that so important, Pastor? Because I love him. And I couldn't stomach, whether in my house or in my school or on my job or in my community, I couldn't stomach. being a counterfeit and misrepresenting the Christ that I serve. We're all going to have to get on our faces things before the Lord and say, God, help us to be what you need us to be. Because Brother Brian said it on, on, on Sunday night, but I think we need to really get this out straight. God ain't playing games. Amen. God's not sitting up in heaven saying, ooh, my new destiny, they'll really worship me. I look past all this and stuff. No. no. He's trying to condition us to the place that he can trust us to be sincere, authentic representatives of his gospel in the earth. Somebody said, well, I'm not out there drinking or partying, Pastor. I'm not out there committing fornication. But again, where, what does our home look like? As a man, am I submitted to Christ? If, 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 we have, if we have young men in the church who have been raised by single mothers, which we do, is there men in here that could be examples to them of what a godly man looks like? I'm not saying there's not. I'm just saying we need to ask. God, if that, those young men look to me as an example, am I being an authentic example? Am I the legitimate Uh, reflection of Jesus Christ. Am I submitted to Christ? Am I a worshiper? Am I a lover of God? Am I, a, am I hungry for the word? And as sisters, when we, we look at ourselves, am I exemplifying what Christ has asked of me as a mother and as a wife? Am I submitted to underneath the headship of my godly husband? Or am I still unsatisfied unless my hands are at the steering wheel? Amen, brother. <laughs> because we're supposed to be his body. And how can we love him and misrepresent him? When people looked at them in Antioch, they said these people are followers of Christ. They called them Christians. Because they could identify them with Christ. Can I be identified with Christ? I, maybe not where I need to be right now, but I pray that if I let the word of God go to work in my heart and the spirit of God to work in my heart, that someday somebody will be able to look at me and say, without ever asking, that man's a Christian. Amen. You, don't have to, you don't have to wonder who a Muslim is. You don't have to wonder who the Amish are. You don't have to wonder where the Mennonites are. You don't have to go and see, is that a Buddhist monk? They're so profoundly devoted to their faith that they have found this incredible key that Christianity, especially in the Western world, is lost. And that is, it's not about you. I want to go to a church where the pastor would encourage me don't, don't rebuke now. Don't. I, I can't stand them preach, preach that we rape people. 
God never conditioned the church to the desire of the people. His desire is to condition the people to himself. So God, what does it look like? Lord, do I have my children underneath the authority that God has put in their life? Well, I can't honestly say I got it right there right now. But if God will help me and if God will help Shonda, we're going to get it there. And hopefully, at least in that, we'll be able to put enough God in it that he'll actually want to serve God when he's 18 instead of go out into the crowd. Amen. These ignorant parents let their children go on off. Uh, it was rascals when I was young. But now this stupid rain nightclub down on Stone Drive, they're having youth nights now. That place, it, it showed up on my Facebook, that place was packed full of young people. And the parents say, well, at least they're providing something for the young people to do in, in Kingsport. No, they're not. They're, it's a commercial to future customers. A nightclub don't care about your children. Because when they turn 18 and 21, they want them up in there spending money in their club. They're just, they're just perpetuating a future customer base. Well, I don't let my children go to the nightclub. But you let them, are you letting them dance like they go to the nightclub? Even if it's your home playing around. Do you let them listen to the music they're listening to in the nightclub? Because your conditioning them to be future matrons. Somebody said, well, if I, if I take this away from my kids, they'll go ape. If that really is in your spirit, then you already know you have failed. And it's time to repent and say, Lord, let me do this with it. That is right. Now there's some stuff we got to dig out of our kids. We put it in there. You might say, I didn't put it in there. Other people put it in there. That's because you let them be around. There are family members I won't let Xander be around. I don't care. I wouldn't let them be in the room by themselves, him himself with them. Because I don't know what he'd be listening to. I don't know what he'd be watching. I don't know the conversation that's going to take place. Hey, no way. There ain't no way it's happening. Because I am responsible before God. Come on, somebody. Amen. I'm responsible before God to make sure what's sown into his spirit is whatsoever things are pure. Yeah. Whatsoever things are lovely. Come on, somebody. Amen. What if our kids have already had access to it? They have, and he has. You know what you gotta do? You gotta get on your face and repent. Ask God to forgive you and then pray desperately. For the wisdom necessary to pull them out of that pit. Amen. And they're going to freak out and they're going to do all kinds of crazy stuff. But let God be God. Yeah. Because what I want to see out of this church is I want to see a whole group of people being the authentic representation of what Jesus Christ really looks like. Amen. I had somebody post on one of my statements the other day talking about. Well, he was, he was called a wine driven and a drunkard because he came eating and drinking. <laughs> I knew where they were going with that stupid stuff. They were trying to say that Jesus drank with them. And I mean drank. I'm not talking about that he drank with them. I thought, you fool. Who called him a wine bibber and a drunkard? The people, the same people that called him a bastard. That wasn't legitimate truth. They were smearing his reputation to try to discredit him. Right. Yet yeah, Christians are just sitting there tapping that stuff like it's, that's, ah, you're smearing him. The Bible said he was tempted in all points like as we are yet without sin. Yeah. Which means that Christ did not have to sin to reach the world. He could live a holy life in the yeah. future. Yeah. He could live a righteous life, Brother Joe, and still impact the world. 
church don't have to get out of this mess, that we have to compromise something, we have to loosen the bands a little bit in order to reach the world. No, we don't. If we just be like Jesus. Amen. Hallelujah. Brother Pearl and I were talking about it the other day, that when the when when darkness, gross darkness comes, they're going to appreciate the light, brother. <laughs> and the darkness comes to expose the light. So let us be the light. Amen. Yeah. Somebody said, how are we going to do that? Because we're going to serve him like we love him. Because we just love him so much. We're going to obey him like we love him. I'm going to get in his word, not because it's a ritual or routine, but it's it's who he is. Yeah. And I just want to know him. Hallelujah. So I'm going to read his word so I can see what he is. So I can find out about him. Yeah. Man, praise amen. God. Amen. Somebody say amen. amen. So why are you going to come to church on Sunday, Pastor? Because I love him. Why are you not going to go out and drink and smoke and be a whoremonger this week, Pastor? Because I love him. Why are you going to serve him this week? Because I love him. Why are you going to talk to him? Because I love him. I love him. You, you're going you're gonna to keep from doing all that because you're afraid of judgment. God's going to come down on you. No, I'm going to keep from doing that because I don't want to misrepresent him. Because I could not bear to think that I was the one that smeared his name. Because I love it. So I like Paul. Pray that you would consider what I say. And the Lord give you understanding. All Amen. 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 Hallelujah. Somebody say, because I love him. Woo, glory to God. All right, we're going to take up our offering. Praise God. Because I love him. Hallelujah. I want to sing. I don't want to be ashamed before this coming. Yeah. Somebody say, why is doctrine so important to you, Pastor? Because he is the word. Yeah. How could it not be important to me? Yeah. When I see people misrepresenting doctrine, what I see them do is misrepresenting the word. And why don't I want the word misrepresented? Because I love him. Yeah. It's not because Jared Manning wants to be so bright and intelligent. People sit there and applaud him and say, oh, you're so brilliant. I just don't want to disappoint him because I love him. I don't want to misrepresent his word. I love him. I love him. All right. Why are you going to give tonight? I love him. Amen. Father, in the name of Jesus, we thank you so much. For your presence we have felt tonight and for your word we have heard. Now we're going to worship you in our giving, God. And we're not going to give begrudgingly, though, but Lord, we're going to give God with joy in our spirit because we love you. Now bless our time of giving. Bless us have to give tonight. Bless them abundantly as you watch over your word to perform it concerning them. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. All right. Amen.
So we want to pray for them. And, and please go by and see them. Sister Opal will never mind anybody coming in and, and seeing them. And, and Sister Karen's out. Man, I tell you what, it's, 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 it looks like the Golden Girls up in there. I mean, it, 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 <laughs> about the truth, so help me God. Uh, we want to <laughs> want to pray for Braxton. Uh, he's doing much better um, physically, but I, I want to see my grandson raised in church. Let's pray to that. Sister Becky Burke, uh, Brent Castle, still needs our prayer. But Don Slusher is really needing our prayer, so he is in a really bad way. Um, there was a really, I don't know if you know, there was a horrible episode today. And they had to come, the police had to come to the house because this nursing home let him go for whatever reason. Um, the police had to come, they had to take him out, sedate him. And this, I'm telling you, this dementia is it's vile and evil. Amen. So let's pray for him and that God would just touch him. And pray for Sister Betty. She really needs our prayer. And then uh, her daughter, Sherry, isn't that right? Here's another name. We want to pray for her. That God would just comfort them and strengthen them. Sister Betty was just beside herself today. but. I just kept patting her and praying for her and just telling her, you know, that's right. Maybe hold on to the Lord. And uh, so we want to pray for Shannon. He's having foot pain. I'm sure you all saw the picture. His foot's really swollen. Let's pray for him. Solomon Gavin, always in our prayers. Uh, Brandon, we'd love to see him around. We're going to keep praying. We're going to keep him on the prayer list so that we can we can keep him here. He's going to listen. I want to pray for Sister Betty Randolph, Sister Barbara, and Sister Nancy. So it's a lot to pray for tonight. Uh, but we have mentioned these names because we trust that God's able. And that he's a healer, he's a deliverer, um, and that he's a way maker. And uh, so let's just remember that. And again, please pass a word of encouragement. If, if, if it comes across your mind tomorrow, you know, either call Sister Betty or, or drop by and, and see her, I'm sure. Uh, she wouldn't mind just to, just to encourage her. She, I mean, she's going through a lot right now. You sisters, does she take the text? If you want her, if you want her phone number, you can see Sister Cheryl. Uh, Brother Earl has her phone number as well. Um, just to just to send a word of encouragement. She just really needs it right now. She's struggling. Saying, this is this is a hard thing for her. So let's pray for her, and let's just pray for each other. And God will let the word of God be spoken based deeply in their heart. I don't want to be a forgetful hearer. I want to be a doer of the word of God. And it's so into my spirit produce fruit. All right, let's pray. And then we'll be dismissed. And then you all have a wonderful rest of the week. And we'll see you on Sunday. All right, Father, we thank you so much for this great honor and opportunity we have had to be in your house. To feel your presence, to hear from your word, God. Father, we thank you, oh God, for your loving kindness and your tender mercy. And Jesus, we thank you for your obedience to the Father. That you might show us how to walk before him in love, oh God. That, that it might not be something that we do out of coercion or not, or because we're afraid of the judgment of God coming down upon us. But we serve you because we love you, oh God. Because we, 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 we live a holy life because we don't want to misrepresent you, God. We care about your word and the truth because, Lord, we don't want to misdeclare you, O oh Lord. Father, help that to be the anthem of our hearts, God. That everything we do would be motivated because we know we represent you. And we love you so much we couldn't afford to smear your reputation, Lord. Father, we pray for each request that has been mentioned, God. Every name that we have brought before you, God, and every need, God, that has been declared in this place. Heal by your mighty power. Deliver by your mighty power. Strengthen, comfort, encourage, God. Lord, draw your people back to your house, Lord. Father, those that are sitting at home, God, should be in church. No, they should be in church. There's no reason for them not to be in church. Lord, let them be convicted even now, God, to get back into your house that they might pursue, Lord, the one their sin loves. Now, Father, we pray that you would watch over your people. Keep them, oh God. Use them mightily for your glory this week, God. Bring us all back together again safely at the next appointed time. For this, we will give you the praise and the glory and the honor. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. Amen.